art as we have discussed the concepts of the designing of the fir filter using the windowing method today we are just going to describe in details as we have discussed the basic concepts now we are just going to elaborate all the concepts which will be utilized in order to uh, design the fir filter using the windowing method here and for that purpose we will also consider here some examples so that we can make uh, clear ourselves that how the uh, fir filter will be designed by the given requirement or the specifications here we will consider here are the linear filter design concept and as we know it is used to be uh, like a, an art and now there are so many tools and software available in order to design the optimal uh, filter here we are saying the optimal filter because it is a compromise between the cost and performance of the filter for dsp uh, there are the two common classes of the filters two uh, design methods one is for the recursive method and the second one is the auto uh, 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 here the moving average method that is the first one is the iir and the second one is the fir both classes use finite order of the parameters for that purpose of the designing because as we know in order to uh, analyze the performance of any system or the filter we have to compare the four parameters and these four parameters are one is the speed that is related to the delay propagation delay of the algorithm or the uh, here the system itself and the second one is the power consumption that is the power uh, used in order to uh, either they execute the algorithm or uh, utilized by the system here and the third one is the space uh, space either in the uh, on the silicon wafer or in the form of the memory space and the fourth parameter is also very important when we use here the digital signal processing because during the time of the digitization there is a need of the profession so the fourth parameter is the finite word length effect so during the time of the desi uh, designing we have to focus on the optimal concept and after the designing we have to cover these four, four parameters in order to analyze the behavior of the designed system and for that purpose we, there is a need of the finite number of the components and for that purpose we have to use the finite order of the parameters for the purpose of the designing and here we are just going to cover the fir designs uh, which we have mentioned briefly in the uh, previous lecture and after that we will uh, come to the uh, here the iir designing concept and uh, after this uh, designing we will come to the next topic that is the design of the iir filter here now we are just starting uh, here the concept of the designing suppose any filter has to be designed and requirements are given that is the given desired frequency response uh, is given in the graphical manner and that can be represented mathematically in this manner uh, by taking sde to power j omega and by taking the inverse fourier transform of that graphical representation or the mathematical representation in frequency domain we will get here 1 upon 2 pi integration from minus pi to pi s d e to power j omega e j omega d omega and this is the inverse Fourier transform of the ideal filter here and in this case there are the infinite number of the sequences or we can say there are the infinite number of the coefficients and if there are the infinite number of the coefficients then naturally the components which are required must be infinite and that is not physically realizable so we will convert these number of the components in the finite number of the components here then uh, after getting this inverse Fourier transformation we have to obtain the mth order that is a finite order related to the causal fir filters see here we have to focus on these two points one is the mth order that is the finite value and the filter nature must be the causal in this case the nature is anti causal lying for the negative as well as the positive values here but the filters must be the causal here so uh, uh, how it uh, will be done by truncating the hn so how the hn will be trun uh, truncated here by shifting with the help of the say some window here sdn will be multiplied by the omega n here and now n will be a finite number having a value between the 0 to capital m where capital M is less than infinity. 
otherwise this hn will be considered as the zero these concepts we have discussed in the uh, in the previous lecture uh, and now the same multiplication in frequency domain can be represented with the help of the periodic convolution concept that is the convolution of the hd e j omega that is the desired frequency response with the frequency response of the selected window here w e to power j omega here now if we consider here very simple window that is the rectangular or the box core window here then that window in frequency domain will be represented w e to power j omega e to power minus j omega m by 2 sin omega m plus 1 divided by 2 upon sin omega by 2 and we have derived this but this relation in the previous lecture here so here this is the hd e j omega that is the impulse uh, response has been converted into the frequency domain and in frequency domain representation is the hd e j omega and it has to be uh, periodically convolved with the here the selected window and the window is in the form of the sync function so after the convolution we will get this type of the window here and this is the Uh, the first the upper side is the amplitude response and the lower one is the frequency response of the selected window and we have also observed these type of the graphs uh, during the time of our uh, lab work uh, when we had we had used the concept of the matlab or the functions related to the matlab now this is the frequency response of the filter which has to be designed but this is which type of the frequency response this one is the amplitude uh, response of the uh, here the optimal filter uh, that has been specified from the required filter that has to be designed i am repeating it that is requirement to specification requirement is ideal from the ideal we have specified this one that has to be designed here now if we again see this uh filter after getting the higher uh, the convolution then we will find what is the modification this one was the ideal dotted line dotted black lines this was was the ideal frequency response existing from minus omega c to plus omega c after some practical approaches we have converted into the form of the specifications and now what is the additional points which have been included in this a uh, physically realizable filter are the pass band ripples means some ripples will be allowed in the pass band or permissible range of the ripples in the pass band and what is the another parameter stop band ripples are also have to be considered means we have to consider the permissible range of the ripple in the stop band and at the same time in place of selecting the transition width zero now there must be some significant value of the transition width here so we have included here the three parameters and we have also gone through these three parameters in the previous lectures and we have concluded that these three parameters that is the pass band uh, ripple the stop band ripples are the ripples in the pass band ripples in the stop band as well as the transition width these three parameters must be considered like the three angle of a triangle when we are trying to improve any one parameter then this improvement will be achieved at the cost of remaining two parameters and vice versa is also true here yeah. so during the, uh, so on the basis of the need and the requirement we have to select the different types of the approximation okay so now we will consider here that different types of the windows for the different purposes for example uh, in the first one we have discussed the rectangular or the box car window and other taper windows are the hand window hanging window and here the hanging window here and these are defined uh, by uh, matlab command we can get these window by these uh, commands here the hand m plus 1 hanging m plus 1 or the hanging m plus 1 where the m is the length of the window and we have discussed these uh, commands as well as these mathematical equations in the previous lectures here now we are coming and we have also discussed one more window that is related to the kaiser window 
and the kjer window is a trade off between the ripples as well as the transition bit that is the side lobe attenuation and the transition bit and for that purpose we have used a special type of the function that is the i not beta here and we have defined the different values of the beta for the different shapes so uh, here now if we consider a trade off between the ripples versus transition bit say Uh, see here uh, that if we consider the two window, one is the box car that is the rectangular, and the second one is the triangular here. Now, if we compare these two, then we'll find that triangular has the wider bandwidth, wider main lobe bandwidth here in comparison with the uh, box car. But what is the drawback? What is the advantage of this one? The advantage is side lobe attenuation is larger than that of the this box car here and the same can be and here we have used the range from 0 to 1 positive side and 0 to minus 0.2 in the negative side and if we consider here the 0 to minus 70 then we can compare these results something like in this manner here that is the box car and the triangular is given here and the one is the here the normal graph and the second one is the logarithmic similarly we have in the second example we have considered uh, the hanging and the hanging window here the uh, similarly we can compare if we see the magnitude response then we will see that more or less performance of the hanging and hanging window are approximately considered to be the same but if we consider here the main lobe bit then the main lobe bit of the hanging window is slightly less than that of the hanging window here and side lobe attenuation of the hanging window is greater slightly greater than that of the hanging hanging window so these are the comparison and uh, according uh, to this concepts we can compare the performance of other uh, windows here and we have also discussed these concepts in the previous lectures uh hopefully you have uh, performed the related experiments in the laboratory and you have compared the performance of the different type of the windows or nahi kiye hain then please do it now for the purpose of the designing what we have to do see we are just going to describe the steps and then we will consider one example so far we have discussed the basic concepts how the filter will be designed using the window method and we are just going to describe the here the steps in order to design the filter here so what has to be done at the first level choose a desired frequency response that will be named as the hd e to power j omega and it must be the non poisonous that is the zero delay and an uh, infinite impulse response and if derived from the continuous time then choose p that is a sampling time period and use the formula s d e to power j omega h c j omega by t and then we have to use the length of the window a uh, window length must be equal to the m plus 1 and what is the purpose of this one this affects the transition width and type of the window uh, it affects the transition width and the ripples both here and the modulate it uh, window modulate to shift impulse response here and see here whatever is the response in frequency domain that will be modulated by e to power minus j omega m by 2 now determine the truncated impulse response h1n truncated impulse response see here this is the truncated impulse response not the windowed impulse response truncated impulse response hn 1 upon 2 pi minus pi to pi s d e to power j omega and e to power minus j omega m by 2 e to power minus j omega n in order to shift the negative portion towards the right side that is uh, in order to avoid the negative portion that is the anti causal portion that is the truncation will take place here and the n will lie from 0 to capital n now we have to select the window and then we have to apply the window here in order to get the windowed impulse response again repeating this is the truncated impulse response and the next one will be the windowed impulse response 
here the uh, it, this truncated impulse response will be multiplied by the selected window and then we have to check uh, here the uh, and we have to compute here the frequency domain representation of this one uh, window impulse response if yeah, whether the all the specifications are meeting uh, to the required value or not if not uh, if we are not getting the satisfactory result naturally we have to change the value of the m or we can change the type of the window here or both now if we consider here the very simple example that is the hd e to power j omega is 1 in the cutoff frequency is range of the omega starting from the 0 to omega c either side plus side or the negative side otherwise it will become the 0 that is the low pass data here now we will select the m that is the window length and set h1 e to power j omega that is the related to the truncated value h d e to power j omega e to power minus j omega m by 2 and hence we will get here that truncated frequency response that is the h1 n and this will be the inverse Fourier transformation of this one that is the sign omega c n minus m by 2 divided by pi n minus m by 2 in this range when n is lying between the 0 and capital m and it has also been derived in the previous classes here otherwise this value will become zero here now if we uh, apply here some manipulation then we will find that it is nothing but this one is a sync function that is represented as omega c by pi sync omega c by pi multiplied by n minus m by 2 so this is a sync function here now window uh, sync function means this truncated impulse response will be multiplied by the window function w what wn here and we will get the hwn so from the hn we have to derive the h1n that is the truncated uh, impulse response and then we will get here the window impulse response wn multiplied by the h1n that is the sync function omega c upon pi sync omega c upon pi n minus m by 2 this is the impulse response of our desired low pass filter and if we have designed any low pass filter then accordingly we can uh, design here the high pass filter or the band pass filter by applying here the transformation method so first we will design the here the low pass filter using the window method so what we have learned during this discussion that if any ideal filter has to be designed then that requirement means that ideal filters uh, requirement has to be converted into the physically realizable form and how it will be done when we consider the inverse Fourier transform of the ideal filter then we will get that it exists for the infinite duration and it exists for the positive as well as the negative values of the n that is it is anti-causal also and what is our approach our approach is to select here the finite number of the components means we are interested in order to select the finite number of the coefficients and for that purpose we have and at the same time we are also interested to this consider only the causal response because anti-causal means physically not realizable concept so not realizable concepts has to be converted into the uh, realizable concept using the uh, uh, here that truncation and after that in order to achieve a trade up between the here the main low bit and the side low attenuation we will select the different types of the window and the truncated impulse response will be multiplied by that selected window we are again repeating it that we have to multiply the truncated impulse response with the selected window not any random window here the selected window means there must be a criteria in order to select the window means which window will be selected for the 
purpose of the designing of the filter for, uh, for the required uh, mode here. Now, if we consider an example, say the example one, design a low pass filter with pass band H frequency is 0 0.4 pi and stop band H frequency is 0 0.6 pi and these frequencies are in the digital domain. And as we know, in the digital domain, range is from minus pi to pi and generally we consider from zero to pi here. And the omega p, omega s is given, which exhibits a minimum attenuation. We have to see all the, here the components related to the specifications. Exhibits a minimum attenuation greater than 50 dB in the stop band. If we see and if we recall the here the representation of the uh, just coming to the previous slide, let's see here this one. If we consider the truncated value of this one, then we have to consider only the right side of this one that is 0 to omega c here, and then we will find there is attenuation in the pass band. And this is the maximum attenuation that is possible in the pass band here. And because before this one, whatever is the attenuation that is lower than that value here. So this value will be named as the maximum attenuation in the stop band. Now we come in the pass band here. In the pass band, whatever is the attenuation that will be known as the maximum attenuation in the pass band. Now we come to the stop band here, then we'll find that this value equal to the first side load or this one when it crosses the stop band is it is the minimum attenuation it is the minimum attenuation that takes place because the as we are moving towards the right side here the value of the attenuation increases we will count the attenuation from this value towards this value here so in the stop band attenuation at the stop band is frequency, whatever is the attenuation that will be named as the minimum attenuation in the stop band. And in the pass band, whatever is the attenuation at the pass band H frequency, say something uh, somewhere at this point, this will be named as the maximum attenuation in the pass band. So, Again, coming to the example, it exhibits a minimum attenuation greater than 50 dB, means 50 dB must be the attenuation at the stop band H frequency, at least at the stop band H frequency in the stop band here. So for this purpose, first of all, we have to select a particular type of the window and then we have to select a length of the window because if we move to the previous slides again here, then we'll find that it has to be truncated on the basis of the M. That is, we have to decide the length of the M. And after truncation, it will be windowed with the help of the window function WN, means the type of the window or the selection of the window is required here. So at the first level, we are trying to select the window, type of the window and the length of that selected window here. Now choose the window type here. An ideal low pass filter has infinite attenuation in the stop band. If we again come to the point here and see what is the attenuation in the stop band for the ideal filter here the this attenuation is infinite in the stop band but it is not possible for the practical purposes here and the value of the attenuation is given that it should be minimum 50 dB in the stop band an ideal low pass filter has infinite attenuation in the stop band when we approximate an ideal filter with a practical filter using the window method B accept some approximation and that's why there will be the approximation error. 
Now the peak approximation error depends on the type of the window and is known for each window as reported in this table here. Now if we select the rectangular window, then the peak side lobe amplitude related uh, relative value of peak side lobe amplitude in dB will be minus 13 and approximate width of the <coughs> main lobe for this type of the window it will be 4 pi by m plus 1 and the peak attenuation error approximation error that is that 20 log delta in dB this will be equal to the minus 21 and for the Bartlett window the peak side lobe attenuation in dB this will be equal to the minus 25 and the approximate width of the main lobe this will be the 8 pi by m and approximate here the error approximation error will be minus 25 dB. This was the assignment that was given to you in order to perform it into the laboratory and hopefully you have done it and I am just giving you the hint how will you make the report. Now for the hand window the peak side low uh, will be minus 31 dB and 8 pi by m will be the approximate width of the main low and peak approximation error will be minus 44 dB here. Hamming window minus 41 and it, it is the minus 41 dB is the peak side lobe amplitude here and the 8 pi by m will be the main lobe width and minus 53 will be the approximation error in dB. For the black man minus 57 and it is the peak side lobe amplitude and 12 pi by m is the approximate width of the main lobe and peak approximate error will be minus 74. Now if we see this graph, this comparative graph or the comparative properties of the different type of the windows and again compare these properties with our example in which we are interested to design the filter then we will see that the here the minimum attenuation should be 50 dB. So if we come to this one then we will find that these are the two windows which can be selected for this one that is the Hamming having the 53 dB attenuation and black man 74 dB attenuation. But the black man window has some drawback that it has the main lobe width is larger. See here, since the black man window will lead to an over designed filter, this is due to the fact that for given window length m, the black man gives a wider main lobe which is not desired. Hence, in this example, we will select which one that is the Hamming window. And we will select here the Hamming window. This is the way of the selection of the window. Now we are coming to the point that is the selection of the M. Okay. So here approximate the window length that is the selection of the M. We know that the cutoff frequency of any filter will be equal to the omega s plus omega p by 2 and we can find a rough estimation of the window length by equating the transition band of the filter with the main lobe width of the window here. In this example the transition band width is how much? Stop band edge frequency minus pass band edge frequency that is the 0 0.6 pi minus 0 0.4 pi and it will become 0 0.25. Since the main lobe width of the Hamming window is approximately how much? Come to the this one here, the Hamming window, it is near about the 8 pi multiplied by the m here. So it will be 8 pi m uh, by m, it must be 8 pi by m. So we have to calculate the m and we will get here the m approximately 
how much that is the 40 here now this means that the design filter will be of the what must be the length of the filter this must be the 41 the length of the filter must be the 41 since m is uh, 40 so the length must be the m plus 1 that is the 41 so far we have determined the type of the window and the length of the windows now we have to describe the window wn what is the formula for the window that is the which window it is the having window coming to the here the mathematical description of the hamming window see this is the mathematical description of the hamming window that is the 0 0.54 0 0.46 cos n pi n upon m by 2 in the finite range of the n otherwise this will become zero here so according to this formula here we will describe the wn 0 0.54 minus 0 0.46 cos 2 pi n by m here by m and now we will uh, after defining this one next is the find the appropriate ideal filter here what will be the appropriate filter here the cutoff frequency as we have discussed that it will be the omega s plus omega p divided by 2 so what will happen in this example, we need to find the impulse response of the ideal low pass filter with omega c is equal to 0 0.55. And now, in the as per the previous uh, example in which we have derived the SD, that is the here the desired frequency response of the filter, this will become omega c upon pi sync omega c upon n pi here and we know the value of the omega c is the 0 0.5 so this will become here 0 0.5 pi so this will become the 0 0.5 sync n by 2 here now this is the impulse response of the filter now apply a time shift of the m by 2 <coughs> and multiply the derived impulse response by the window here to have a causal linear phase response we need to apply a time shift equal to the m by 2 in the ideal impulse response and multiply the result by omega n therefore we will find 0 0.54 minus 0 0.46 cos 2 pi n by m and multiplied by 0 0.5 sync n minus 20 by 2 n minus m by 2 that is the n m is 40 so by 2 n minus 20 by 2 so this is the hn which we have derived from the previous steps so what we have done here that first we have selected the window and how we have selected the window with the a clue or that is given here that the attenuation must be at least 50 dB in the stop band with the help of this one. Now we have the option of the two windows and we have selected the hamming because it is better than that of the black man in the case of the performance here. And after selecting the type of the window, hamming window, now we have to select the length of the window and for the length of the window we have selected it with the help of the main low bit that that is the 8 pi by m it must be the 40 and from this one we have derived that m must be the 40 and we have written here the exam uh, here the equation of the that hamming window that was derived in the table in mathematically after that we have to find the approximate appropriate ideal uh, filter here in terms of the impulse response and it will be the here the inverse Fourier transform that is the omega c upon pi sin omega c upon n pi that is the uh, that will be here the appropriate ideal filter inverse Fourier transformation of the ideal filter now this filter will be shifted 
by the m by 2 that is the truncation will take place and whatever is the result that will be multiplied by the window here so this is the window and this is the shifted value of the or the truncated value of the ideal filter multiplied by the window so this is the windowed impulse response or we can say the frequency response of the desired filter impulse not frequency response it is the impulse response of the desired filter and in order to analyze the performance of this one we have to analyze the frequency response of this derived or the designed filter now in order to get the frequency response we will apply here the fourier transformation and the frequency response that is the amplitude of that fourier transformed impulse response will be the amplitude response and this graph graph one represents the amplitude response and now we will compare this response with the required response whether we are getting the response as per our requirement or not if it is in the permissible range it's okay otherwise there is a need of the modification of the window or we have to select the another type of the window here now the simulated frequency response exhibits an attenuation of the 55 db and what must be the it must be the closure to the 50 db and naturally it is in the stop band which is very close to the rejection predicted by the peak approximation error of the hanging window as soon as shown in figure one that is the previous figure here uh, and figure two omega p and omega s pass band and stop band is frequency are slightly different from the design specification however the differences are negligible here after the designing we have to mention the differences which we have derived or which we have observed in the frequency response of the design filter in comparison with the desired frequency response as discussed in the previous articles in this series the window method leads to the same ripples in the pass band and the stop band however since fi in figure one uses logarithmic scale that's why in that one if we see in this one then the ranges is larger minus 55 to 60 uh, minus 65 or near about minus 60 uh, in comparison with this one because in the previous case in in one case we are using the logarithmic and logarithmic variation is larger than the normal variation here we have to note that always there is a need of the software for the verification of the design however hand calculations give us a better understanding of the problem and enables us to have a rough approximation of the system so what we have to do we have to design the filter here the use uh, using the rough estimation that is by hand and then we have to utilize the available software in order to verify our design when we design our filter or any system uh, by the hand calculation then we check each and every steps which we have gone through during the time of the study of that concepts or study of the designing of that system here and here the software just helps us and it provides us a graphical user interface or sometimes it provides us a dialog box so that we can enter the properties but what are the steps those steps are not observable during the time of the designing these steps are derived calculated and computed by the software so in order to understand the each and every step of the designing we should use the hand calculations for the simple examples in order to understand the each and every steps and then naturally for the purpose of the verification and the analysis we should use the available software 
and that software may be the dot m file that is a arrangement of the commands or that may be a toolbox available in the form of the dialog box or available in the form of the graphical user interface or we can also use here the block diagram uh, that is the simulink using the dot mdl file so here um, it enables us to have a rough approximation of the system and in this example simple hand calculations enables us to roughly um, approximate the value of the m there is a double m but it is the single m here capital m we have approximated the value of the m due to the approximation and during the time of the here the selection of the window we have selected the hanging window uh, that have a attenuation of the minus 53 in place of the um, more than 50 um, and we have also seen that uh, the black man has the larger attenuation that is uh, more closer to our require, uh, requirement but we have not selected this one in order to design the optimal filter here when we say optimum designing it is nothing but this is a trade off this is a trick that has to be used by the design engineers that is a trade off uh, between the cost and performance here so in order to uh, design the optimum filter we have used the Hamming window here and for after selecting the Hamming window we have decided the length of the window and then we have approximated the ideal filter by taking the impulse response of the ideal filter uh, here uh, and then we have truncated it we have shifted it we have converted it into the causal form and then it, uh, this truncated impulse response has been multiplied by the window function selected window function and this will be the impulse response of the desired filter and in order to see whether the response of the filter which will be designed by this method will be approximately same as the per the given requirement or not there is a need of the uh, observation of the frequency response of the designed filter so we have utilized here the transformation of the time domain representation into the frequency domain representation for the purpose of the frequency response analysis and here we have utilized the magnitude response uh, variation of the magnitude response with respect to frequency and um, we can draw this graph either in the normal graph form or in the logarithmic form in the logarithmic form this will become in dv and the variation will be larger and we can uh, here the analyze the performance more easily that's why we use here the logarithmic representation we have also concluded that during the time of the designing for the in order to understand the each and every step we should follow uh, here the the designing steps by hand and after that for the purpose of the verification we should utilize the available software and for this purpose we can utilize any mode of the matlab or we can test it verify our design using the dot m file dot mdl file or using the toolbox and in the previous lecture we have also discussed one example and i think it, in that case we have also considered the same specification that is the omega p was i think it was 0 0.4 pi and omega s was also 0 0.6 pi but what is what was the difference in the previous example in the previous lecture that was i think I, on the tuesday we have used a designing method of the fir filter and in that case also we have utilized the value of the omega p and omega s same that is the pass bandage frequency and the stop bandage frequency but what was the difference what is the difference between these two type of the designing which we have covered on tuesday and which we are just discussing here today yeah response please what was the difference 
Caser window was used yesterday. Yeah, yeah, very right. Which window was used? Caser. Caser window. Caser window. Sorry. Yeah. Who is responding? Anshika. Anshika. Very good. Good. So only the difference is in the window. And see, here we have not to select the window randomly, but we have to select the window according to our need and requirement. Why we have selected here this window, having window? Because we have a restriction that pass band attenuation must be greater than 50 dB. And we have considered here only the sinusoidal windows. And what was the what is the specialty with the Kager window? That is it that provides a trade-off, that is the optimal solution between the main low bit and the side low attenuation. And in this one, we have selected the hamming window here. So during the time of the selection, we have to see each and every requirement or the specification whatever is given, then according to those requirements or the specification or both, we have to select the type of the window. Then in the next step, what will be the next step? We have to select the length of the window. After selecting the type and left length of the window, we have to calculate or the compute the appropriate ideal impulse response of desired filter then that desired filters impulse response will be truncated by applying the shifting concept shifting by m by 2 and since we have already derived the value of the m so we can shift it or we can truncate it in order to convert it into the Fourier form and windowed impulse response will be achieved when this truncated impulse response will be multiplied by the selected window, not by any random window, by that selected window, which we have decided in the first and second step. Then we will get here the impulse response. Now, whatever is the impulse response, it is nothing but this is the coefficient related to the filter which for which we are interested or we can say these are the coefficients of the filter which we have designed. Now we are interested in order to see the performance means how the amplitude and phase are changing with respect to frequency for this particular design filter and for that purpose we have to select the frequency response. That is now we will apply here the Fourier transformation and after applying the Fourier transformation, naturally this will become here the complex function. And since it is a complex function that will have the terms like e to the power j omega, now it has the two sections, one is the amplitude and the second one is the phase. Now we will analyze the variation of the amplitude with respect to frequency. What is the amplitude response? That is the analysis of the amplitude response. And at the same time, we will also analyze the phase response, means how the phase are changing with respect to frequency. Then after observations, we have to conclude, we have to make a comment whether the responses are within the permissible range, what was expected during the time of the requirement or not. If these responses are in the permissible range, within the permissible range, it's okay. Otherwise, there is a, uh, a need of the modification. And how the modification will take place? First, we will try to change the value of the M. In order to enhance the performance of the filter, we have to increase the value of the M. And if we are not getting the range or the required uh, limit of the permissible range, by enhancing the value of the M, naturally we have to uh, select the another type of the window. Again, we will go to the requirement and according to the requirement, we will select the window here. So these are the steps. And again, after selecting the window, length of the window, then HN, then C, 
shifting then multiplying shifted hn by the wn again we have to analyze the performance here that is the amplitude variation and the phase variation with respect to frequency then finally we will conclude that it is in the permissible range uh, what was expected so this is the design filter this is the concept of the designing and as we have discussed in uh, in the very beginning that we have uh, to utilize one trick and what is that trick that technology that is a trade off between the cost and performance of the system which has to be designed so this is the concept or this is the method which we have discussed in order to design the fir filter uh, using the window method and we have considered the two examples in the first example we have used the kejer window and in the second example we have used the uh, here the hamming window here as per the need and as per the requirement so accordingly uh, we can select the another type of the windows here and if you people have any query any doubt then please ask it Uh, why do we need to uh, decrease the main load width of a filter? Yeah, good, very good question. Now we are just coming to this one. That is, see here. This is the approximate value. Okay, I think it is visible. No, no visible. No. No? Not visible. Presentation to what? It is visible. No. Yes. Again, presenting. One uh, very good question has been raised by I think uh, C. Jansika. Again, am I right? Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Now see, this is the approximation which we have derived from where? From the requirement. See, this is the first step, the requirement, and this is the specification. If you recall about the first lecture in which we have started our journey from the very first level, and what was the first level? That was the requirement. And at that time, we discussed that requirements are always ideal. For example, if we are in a class, and we appear in the examination, then what is our requirement? 100% mark. But there are some practical limitations. That's why there is a need of the modification. Approximation has to be used here. And by the approximation, we are getting this one by the blue in color. Blue in color solid line having larger width. And dotted black line, it shows the ideal response of the low pass filter. Is it okay? Now come to this point that during the time of the designing, what must be the first step? We should avoid this one. Which one? The negative portion because it is anti-causal, physically not realizable. It is totally hypothetical, right? So we have to consider which one? This one from zero towards the this side. Okay. Now, what is our approach? we are trying to minimize the ripples in the pass band so uh, so that we can get nearer to the ideal filter is it okay yes sir. yes or no yes sir. yes and the second requirement similarly uh, we will also try to minimize the ripples in the stop band so that we are approaching towards the true value or the ideal one and what is the transition bandwidth it must be the zero but zero is not possible so we will try to minimize this transition band width. and how is it possible by selecting the lower main loop because this is the main loop this describes the main loop here come to the windows here this is the main loop starting from zero to this side this side as main lobe is lower, then what will happen? Transition band will, will be smaller. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Is that clear? 
Yes, yes. Yeah, good. It was very good question. Okay. Thank you. और कोई भी प्रॉब्लम हो हमेशा क्लास में पूछें ये नहीं कि हम अलग से पूछ लेंगे किसी दिन मेल कर देंगे किसी दिन व्हाट्सअप कर देंगे उससे कुछ नहीं फायदा होता है क्योंकि जब क्लास में पूछते हैं हर एक स्टूडेंट्स उसको समझते हैं और क्लास में अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन भी किया जा सकता है ठीक ना तो आप जो भी डाउट हो हमेशा हर एक स्टूडेंट्स को प्लीज आप लोग बार बार एडवाइस कर रहे हैं रिक्वेस्ट भी करते हैं आप क्लास में जरूर पूछें ठीक है yes, अच्छा कुछ लोगों का सेमिनार है तो सेमिनार का प्रेजेंटेशन आप लोग जानते होंगे शायद कुछ बच्चे हैं जो कल हमारे साथ भी होंगे सेमिनार में आप जब प्रेजेंट करने जाएंगे तो पीपीटी ऐसे बनाइए बेटा जैसे हम लोग बनाते हैं ऐसा नहीं कि आप कहीं से कॉपी कर लें आप मेन पॉइंट्स आप रखिए जो पॉइंट्स बोलने जा रहे हैं टाइटिल होना चाहिए टाइटिल के बाद आप उसके विषय में आप ब्रीफली डिस्क्राइब करिए वट इज द टॉपिक इंट्रोडक्शन then historical background and after historical background what is the uh, main work related to that topic usko describe kariye what uh, what are the works which has been done in that field means what is the status jo bhi aapke paas possible ho ki national level pe international level pe usko aap present kare ke last mein conclude kare and finally you have to mention the references ki kahan kahan se aapne ye points liye hain unko bhi mention kare और फर्स्ट फ्लाइड पीपीटी में आप जानते ही हैं कि आपको टाइटल देना पड़ेगा वट इज द टाइटल आपका डिटेल्स कौन कौन लोग प्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं इन द सुपरविजन आर गाइडेड बाई उनका नाम लिखेंगे ये आप डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट नीचे लिखेंगे ये करके आप प्रेजेंट करेंगे बाकी सर लोग आपको बताएंगे ही ये आपको हमने ऐसे चलते चलते बताया कि कल से शायद हम लोगों का सेमिनार शुरू हो रहा है ना अपने लोगों का ये सर नो कल सेमिनार है ना बोले रहे अच्छे क्यों दे अच्छा चलिए कोई नहीं ठीक है चाहे आप सेमिनार में हो चाहे प्रोजेक्ट में हो चाहे डिजर्टेशन में हो या कोई भी वर्क आप प्रेजेंट कर रहे हो तो जब भी आप प्रेजेंट करें तो आपको यही स्टेप्स फॉलो करना है कि पहले हम क्या कवर करेंगे टाइटल आफ्टर दैट We have to describe the introduction related to that topic. फिर हम हिस्ट्री भी उसकी डिस्क्राइब करेंगे इसी में फिर यह डिस्क्राइब करेंगे वट इज द स्टेटस ऑफ दैट वर्क एट द नेशनल लेवल इंटरनेशनल लेवल की जो कुछ भी हमारे पास जानकारी होगी हम ऐसा प्रेजेंट करें कि कोई जो सुनने आए उससे रिलेटेड वो अपडेट हो जाए फिर और ये हर एक के लिए बड़ा फायदेमंद होगा जैसे आप प्रेजेंट करेंगे दूसरे का फायदा आपको होगा दूसरा प्रेजेंट करेगा तो आपका फायदा होगा सब ये सुनेंगे भी और अच्छा भी लगेगा और हमारे टाइम का पूरा उपयोग भी होगा नॉलेज भी बढ़ेगा अपना ठीक है फिर उसके बाद स्टेटस डिस्क्राइब करने के बाद मेन वर्क क्या क्या है उसमें उससे रिलेटेड उसको डिस्क्राइब करें फिर लास्ट में कंक्लूजन जरूर बताएं कि इसमें क्या क्या आपने डिस्क्राइब किया क्या फ्यूचर में और काम होने वाला है वो सब कंक्लूजन में आना चाहिए फिर सब कंक्लूजन के बाद आप डिस्क्राइब करें वट आर द रिफरेंसेस ठीक है एनी मोर क्वेश्चन और कोई क्वेश्चन थैंक यू हेलो हाँ स्टूडेंट्स एक बार आप अटेंडेंस आप आज की देख लीजिए अपने ठीक है मैं बोल देता हूँ थैंक यू अटेंडेंस छुट्टी हो तो बता दीजिएगा आपको तो मैं अटेंडेंस बोल दे रहा हूँ अभिषेक मिश्रा अभिषेक वर्मा आदित्य पांडे ऐश्वर्या द्विवेदी देन आकाश सिंह के बाद अमन कुमार अमित गुप्ता अनीश कुमार अंशिका पाठक अंशुल प्रजापति अनुज कुमार अपर्णा सॉरी अनुज कुमार देन आर्य कार्तिके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू चंदन मौर्य हर्ष सराब हर्षित हर्षित दुबे देन 
थैंक यू थैंक यू डैन एवरीबॉडी मनीष कुमार मानवेंद्र प्रताप नैंसी नद्या परीक्षित प्रांजल गुप्ता प्राप्ति सिंह देन सलीम खान अफ्तरबेद सत्यार्थ कटियार सौम्या शर्मा सौम्या शर्मा अफ्तरबेद तरुण तरुण तिवारी उत्कर्ष शर्मा उत्कर्ष तिवारी देन बासु अग्रवाल एंड योगेश्वर राय लास्ट स्टूडेंट ठीक है इसमें किसी के अटेंडेंस छुट्टी हो तो बता सकते हैं आप लोग थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू क्या नाम प्रतीक प्रतीक एक मिनट सर उमेश कुमार चेक कर लेता हूँ आपको बने रहिएगा आप अभी मैं अटेंडेंस आपके ले ले रहा हूँ सर उमेश कुमार उमेश कुमार ठीक है प्रतीक और उमेश दोनों लोग बने रहिए क्या कुछ अभी रोक रहे हैं क्या सर नहीं नहीं सर बस केवल अटेंडेंस हमने कहा एक बार चेक कर लेते हैं जिनकी छुट्टी हो अच्छा अच्छा सर बस चेक कर लिया दिन लगा दिया हूँ इनको देख एंड लीव सर हम क्या क्लास छोड़ सकते हैं क्या कोई यस यस सर यस सर थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी सो नाउ आई एम लिविंग थैंक यू वंस अगेन